Okie dokie. Hello, everybody. Uh, I hope y'all are like NASCAR fans. We also have a live demo, so I'm sure you're all just here to see the crash. Um, <laughs> So another promotions talk, uh, another live demo. Um, so first of all, I'm Michael Crenshaw. This is Zach Aller. We are both staff software engineers at Intuit on the Argo CD and Rollouts team. And we are both lead maintainers in Argo Proj. Uh, and our talk is Space Age GitOps, lifting off with Argo promotions. Um, it's actually a continuation of a series of talks that we started at the last ArgoCon. Um, so if you haven't seen that talk yet, we'll have a link at the end. But this content should be fairly standalone. Uh, so before we get into the tooling we're going to talk about, a little bit about Intuit and open source. Uh, we've been the CNCF end user award recipient a couple times in recent years. We have also created and open sourced a ton of tooling, including Argo itself. And I'm extremely proud of the last number. Uh, Intuit represents 23% of the contributions on the Argo CD repo, which if you know the volume on that repo is huge. And that only happens when a company pays maintainers to become subject matter experts and they can merge PRs and do all the work that needs to happen to enable everyone else to contribute as well. So keep up with us at that bit.ly link. Uh, we're on LinkedIn. You can keep up with what Intuit's doing in open source. GitOps promotion. Uh, before we get into the GitOps piece of it, um, some of y'all just saw in the last talk, but I'll quickly reiterate why we do environment promotion at all. And it boils down to the fact that a developer's laptop is not a sufficient testing ground before you ship to prod. It's just not uh, similar enough to a cloud infrastructure for it to be a trustworthy test. So you spin up, um, say, a dev environment and a staging environment alongside your prod environment using all the same cloud infrastructure, and then you do your promotions. Uh, but there are some wrinkles when it comes to doing this with GitOps, so we're going to talk about that. The key challenge when doing environment promotions with GitOps is the fact that you need to do these checks. So you got dev stage prod, maybe you uh, have a fairly basic dev environment and you run some smoke tests. You have a staging environment that has, let's say, more up-to-date data and you can run some performance and some integration tests. Great. Those all pass, you ship to prod. Ideally, these uh, tests are all automated, and they are all quick. But fundamentally, you cannot get away from the fact that they introduce time gaps in uh, your deployment process. And that is fundamentally at odds with how GitOps works. Because in GitOps, you commit a change, it's immediately in your live environment. In environment promotions, you commit a change, there's some period of time, and then it appears in your prod environment. So we have to have some way of representing that time gap in a way that makes sense to users uh, and is reliable. So let's talk about how we're going to go about solving that. Uh, you all hopefully are pretty aware of the GitOps principles, and we're presenting what we think are some initial ideas for GitOps promotion principles. First, autosync has to be on. Um, this is usually the first thing that sort of goes out the window when anyone designs a promotion system using uh, GitOps. You, um, you turn off autosync, you use some orchestration system to run your checks, and then you use that orchestration system to sync your apps. It's exactly what Intuit does. With all 20 some odd thousand of our applications, autosync is off, uh, and we use Jenkins to orchestrate, orchestrate the deployment. The problem is um, you intentionally introduce that drift. We have users come to us and say, I committed my change in Git. Where is it? Why isn't it in prod? And the answer is, well, maybe there's a promotion running. Maybe something failed. We don't know. We have to go look somewhere else to figure that out. So our tool has to enable autosync. Second thing is we want to have a full history of your live state in Git. That's something else you lose when you don't have autosync on. Uh, at Intuit, when there's a problem, when there's an incident, we dig through piles of Jenkins logs and Argo CD API logs to try to understand what the heck was the live state when the problem occurred. Uh, so our tool should enable you to have the full history in a Git branch. And then finally, we think that uh, the entire state of your system should be visible using only your source control management software and your Git software that your developers already know and love. This means that if you want to know your desired state, your live state, and the state of any ongoing promotions, the only things you should have to look at are branches, commits, and pull requests. Don't have to dig through Jenkins logs. Don't have to dig through the Jenkins API. It's all visible there in GitHub, GitLab, et cetera. 
Besides those principles, we wanted to achieve two more advantages in this system that sort of set it apart from other promotion techniques. First of all, we want everything to be declarative, and that means two things for us. One, you have a promotion strategy schema that's very simple. All it says is, here's environment A, environment B, environment C. I want to deploy in that order, and I want to run these checks in between. Dead simple. Your promotion tool is in charge of making that happen for you. Second, we want the user to declare their intent for all environments in one commit at one time. And then it's the job of the promotion system to enact that intent on the relevant environments. The second advantage we want to achieve is extreme reliability. And for us, this means we don't touch dry manifests. In order to do promotions by modifying dry so don't repeat yourself, Helm values files, customized manifests, to do it reliably, your tool has to fully understand the schema of, that, uh, of those manifests. It needs to understand your directory structure, your file name conventions, and the schemas of the files in them. Otherwise, when you go to promote something by, say, copying files or copying pieces of files around, you make mistakes. And our experience has been, we don't think we can build enough information into a promotion system to account for every possibility. So, our system just doesn't touch the dry manifests. By avoiding that automation, we also increase the user's confidence that they're in control. If some other tool is touching my branch with my manifests, I worry that I'm not really in charge of the state of my cluster. So now let's set up what this live demo is gonna look like. I'm gonna do two things. First, show you the hypothetical scenario, and second, give you the theoretical description of how the system works. So, the environments. We're gonna have dev staging prod. We're gonna have one Argo CD app for dev, uh, two for staging, say for EDE and integration tests, and then for prod, we have an east and west region for high availability. This is just to show that environments can have multiple uh, apps, um, but you could have anywhere from one to many, many apps per environment. Now time for the diagram. It's a big diagram. Don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through it. And as I explain it, I want you to pay attention so that when Zach shows you the system in action as he's clicking around, you can look, you can refer back here and understand uh, what's going on under the hood. So, first column, this is the user's dry branch. Call it main, say it's at commit 3F7E. This is where the user is going to commit their changes to all of their environments at one time in their dry manifest. Helm values, files, customize, whatever. Immediately after that, a new Argo CD feature, uh, which is actively under development called the source hydrator, is going to pick up those changes and render them. So it's going to run Helm template, customize build, your config management plugin, whatever. And then it's going to push a flat manifest.yaml per application to what's in the third column, proposed environment branches. And for the dev next branch, we're gonna have a single manifest.yaml for stage and prod next, we'll have two, since there are two apps a piece. That all happened very quickly. User committed, hydrated, pushed. Fourth column comes in, and this is where most of the magic happens. This is where a tool in ArgoProj Labs called GitOps Promoter lives. And when it sees that there are new commits to those proposed environment branches, it's gonna automatically open pull requests for you. And it's going to immediately start looking at your configured checks and saying, okay, can we merge to staging? Can we merge to prod? And it will merge them in order as soon as those checks pass. They're merging to what we're calling live environment branches, so just called uh, dev, stage, and prod. And your sync tool, in our case Argo CD, is gonna automatically sync that to the cluster. Um, that is, that's how we get to the point where we're able to enable auto-sync. Uh, we, instead of storing that time gap in a Jenkins imperative pipeline that's flaky and fails and is difficult to understand, we store that time gap in a pull request, which your users already understand and are familiar working with. So quickly, left to right, user commits, we hydrate, push to proposed environment branches, promoter opens pull requests, merges them in order, uh, those get merged to the live environment branches from which they get synced. Now, I want to be clear, because in the previous talk, we talked about how in branches per environment is a bad idea. They are bad when that is your user interface. All of the stuff to the right of the first column is automated. So the user interface is still one branch. That's why we don't violate the, that rule that Costas correctly identified in his blog post. That's the theory. Time to go into the live demo. Demo 
time. All right. So before we start the demo, exactly, I just have a, a quick raise of hands. How many people, how many people turn off autosync? Fair amount, kind of what we expected. All right. So uh, I'm going to be moving. Pre oh, my resolution got all messed up. Give me. actually built this in so that we could show how live demos suck. Yeah. Don't worry, we have a recording. If things get really bad, we'll right. go back to the recording. The resolution is a little bit weird. So, okay, so like Michael said, we have five environments. I'm gonna kind of give a high level overview here because it's gonna move pretty quick. Uh, the first one's our development environment, and then we have our two staging environments, um, e uh, ETV staging and integration staging, followed by our two productions, US East and US West, and then our promotion strategy, which holds the configuration for the um, the promoter. Uh, but first is first, Michael mentioned that in this slide, that first column was the hydration process. So if we look at Argo CD, we can look at the manifest for this particular configuration. We will also look at the um, repo down below. Uh, we see that we have added this source hydrator field um, with a dry sources section. This is basically where we configure Argo CD to hydrate from. Um, it's the dry side, it's basically the user configuration. You see that we still adhere to the folders. Um, we have our pretty standard uh, customized layout down below in GitHub here, where we have a base directory. We have our environments uh, specific folders. This place is staging. We have ETE, and then we have our pretty standardized customizations layout in here. Uh, the next is I'm gonna skip to the hydrate two. So, this is where the hydrator is now uh, hydrating its changes to, so running customized build and, and writing out to it. And we can see that our environment staging next branch is our holding area for those proposed changes. Um, in this particular case, we have the ETE folder, and like we expected, there's a single manifest.yaml that has uh, the rendered output from our hydration process. Uh, and then Argo CD, of course, syncs to the staging branch, which is the, what's actually running in the cluster. This allows us to turn auto sync on now, um, which is the, one, one of our main goals, uh, which is great. So how we configure the promotion process to, this, to do this is a fairly simple CR called promotion strategy. This is the spec for that. Um, the main points are this environment section, basically the list of branches that contain the, uh, the, uh, the individual applications that Argo CD has rendered for us. In this case, we have our first environment is development, our second environment is staging, and then production. We also have the concept of these active commit statuses. Um, active commit statuses in this case is looking at the previous environment state, and the example that we're gonna use here is Argo CD's idea of healthy and synced. So if we're promoting staging, look back at development, make sure that it's healthy and synced. Um, and then we have proposed commit statuses, which we can see down here in our production environment of HCAP, which you can think of high change awareness period or just like a deployment freeze. Um, so let's go ahead and see how this works. On this repo, I have a couple pre-PRs that basically bump an image in the base directory. So configuring all of our environments to go to the red DNA image and bump this common um, annotation. We will go ahead and merge this PR. And if we go over and look at the uh, development app, we will see that Argo CD is now hydrating this app, meaning it's running customized build and committing it out to the development-next uh, branch or staging area. Once this hydrates, we can go look back at our promotion strategy app in Argo CD, and we can already see that we've gotten a handful of pull request CRs created for each of the environments. Um, if we go, uh, give me one quick second. If we go look at our development environment, we can see that we have a, a nice title. Uh, it's, we're basically promoting this particular dry SHA. So this is the SHA of the main branch where we configured the image bump. We're promoting that SHA to the, all the applications that live in the environment's development um, environment. We have a nice message telling us what SHA we're coming from and where we're going to. Um, let's go ahead, we can go in Argo CD here and merge this PR. 
and you'll see down here in GitHub that this PR uh, will merge. And now because autosync is on, which is one of our goals, we'll see that Argo CD here should start immediately syncing this app. We can go bring up the staging PR and see that uh, we are currently pending with this check on the previous environment's development uh, environment because I pushed a bad image here. Um, so this PR will never merge now. Now these checks can become checks that the system knows about. They can become normal GitHub checks. You could do a required check that's outside of the system and the promoter has to respect that as well. So let's go ahead and fix this PR, or fix this image. So I have another PR here, just basically same thing. It fixes the image to a, an image that actually exists. We can go ahead and merge. Argo CD is now gonna go ahead and do its hydration just like normal. And what we expect to happen is, uh, if we go look back at the promotion strategy resource, we will get once the hydration completes and the promoter realizes that there's a difference between the next and the currently running branch, it will open up a PR to uh, promote those changes. There's the PR that we just saw up here, okay, which is great. So now we have a PR here that has the single commit that fixes the image. We'll see that because these other PRs didn't merge, we're basically stacking up our changes until they go through, which the last commit now has the good image in it. And if we were to look at these changes in this PR, we'll see that we're promoting um, to the yellow, the, the, the good image branch here. So let's go ahead and merge um, this PR in Argo CD again for the development environment. I'll call out one thing while this is doing it. The reason I'm merging this first PR here is we just have a setting turned on on our promotion strategy of this auto promote to false. It's just to allow us to demo kind of the starting of it. Um, if we go look at staging and go look back at the main Argo CD use case here, we'll see that uh, production or development environment is still being deployed and so the check still hasn't cleared yet. As we just saw at real time, the check, because the previous environment is now considered synced and healthy, the promoter will pick this change up and automatically merge this PR. And once again, because auto sync is enabled, uh, we should start getting uh, our two staging environments here. We'll pick that up and start syncing right away. Um, we can look down and see our production environment now has the two requirements, uh, the one of the previous environment's health and the other HCAP check that was configured in the promotion strategy. Now, we'll give it just a minute here for Argo CD to finish syncing these two previous uh, applications here, which will then cause our staging environment to go healthy, and the only thing blocking this check will be HCAP. Cool, it looks like those synced. And we can see that we have the green check now on that the previous environment is now healthy. So if I were to be you know, the CTO or something and all of a sudden we're not in a high tax season or anything like that, I can come in and basically uh, turn off HCAP, which we can do through this fun little Argo CD action. We'll see real quick here that the HCAP check will clear and the promoter will now pick these changes up and start, uh, because AutoSync is on again, we'll start seeing these changes uh, in Argo CD as soon as this merges. Any minute. We don't have like web hooks configured for the yeah. local dev environment, so we gotta wait 10 seconds Same. or so for stuff to happen. Cool, the PR merged. Argo City is going to pick that up and now start deploying that. And that is, uh, we'll see right here that those changes are now going through. Is that, is that clapping mostly because you like the feature or because the demo didn't mostly break? <laughs> Either one we appreciate. <laughs> um, so. Just to recap quickly what we accomplished there. Uh, we have AutoSync turned on, which keeps our users from being confused about what the heck the state of their system is. We got a full audit log in those environment branches, and everything was visible via GitHub and Git branches. 
Uh, obviously, you could layer a UI over this, and we plan to, to make it a little bit nicer. But the base experience is I do everything in GitHub just like I always have. Um, finally, it is declarative. Everything is in a simple CR spec. You commit once, it promotes for you. And then finally, it's extremely reliable because we are not touching dry manifests. We only ever promote manifests that have already been rendered. So to uh, keep up with us and the progress on this project, hit up that QR code that's gonna take you to a link tree. There will be links to review this session. Uh, there will be a link to the previous talk from this series. Um, as well as the GitOps promoter tool repo, which is in Argo Proj Labs. Go give that a star. There are some docs there. We haven't cut a release. This is early days for this code, but the code exists uh, and we're happy to discuss. The link tree also has a link to a Slack channel where we can talk about this stuff. Um, so that's that. Uh, please, we'll, we'll be around by the Intuit booth later as well as through the rest of KubeCon. Come talk to us. But for now, I think we do have a few minutes for questions if you have them. And we have two mics for questions, which will be easier for the folks online who want to want to hear the questions in the recording. Am I good to do that, Dan? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Sweet. Yes. Go ahead. So you talked about how you want to try to minimize environment per branch as a strategy. So as an example, we use the folder per environment pattern mm -hmm. where we have folder for dev, stage, production, and then our GitOps auto-sync is that we use Jenkins to commit to each one of those folders. So a tool like this that is capable of opening pull requests, I could see being a very powerful replacement for that logic that's currently in our Jenkins pipelines. So are you guys opinionated about the branch per environment approach? Do you envision supporting other hydration strategies? So we think that um, in order for this promotion system to work, we need the user to express their intent once in a single commit so that we know where we are in the lineage of changes. If we spread that across multiple branches, then you have to start thinking about, OK, are we going to inspect timestamps in order to form a single line for these changes? So I think that this system is going to keep people in a single branch. I think that's fine. Uh, I do like the folder per environment approach. That's what we use at Intuit. That's what we use like within our team to deploy Argo CD. Um, so that's going to be a primary use case for us to support. The key point is we're not going to copy stuff around between those folders because we don't know what you keep in your folders and we don't want to because then we have to become experts on how you structure your stuff. You structure it however you want. Tell us where your environment folders are. We'll hydrate that out and promote it for you. Thank you. Yep. Hello. Yeah. You talked about this in last KubeCon. When will we have this available for use, and why isn't it available yet? Oh, good question. Uh, so we have spent a lot of time trying to make sure that the concepts are solid, that the design is solid. And it's been incredible how quickly mostly Zach has been able to just like write the code uh, in the past few weeks because the design we feel is very good. So as far as when it will be ready, uh, we at Intuit have some projects that are uh, looking to take advantage of this by around December. So we're going to keep churning on the code until then. Uh, but if you want to contribute, hit up that Slack channel, and uh, we'd love to have your help moving it faster. Yes, let's swap over here. Uh, two quick ones. First, do you have plans to support other Git repos like Azure DevOps, GitLab, all those things? Yes. Um, the, the code is structured in such a way that um, uh, it's in order to implement a new provider, it's just implement a new Golang interface. So I don't know if we will per, per, yeah. per se support that, but if you, we've already had people interested in um, contributing to GitLab support. So it's just a matter of contributing. Okay. And then the other one real quick is um, the uh, the checks for healthiness, are those completely configurable for any other types of maybe outside sources yeah. for running tests and stuff yeah. like that? Completely configurable. You can do GitHub actions to create them. The only requirement is that within GitHub, you configure that check as a required check. And okay. But then you can do whatever you want with it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, time for one more quick one over here. Yeah. Uh, actually, great concept. I really liked it. Just curious about the operational issue around the GitHub. Since we are creating per environment branches, do you see any issues when these branches go out of sync? 
with master and what are the options will then be available for the user if that happens. I want to make sure I, I've got it clear. If the branches will go out of sync with master. They, the environment branches, so you've got the proposed branches, those should stay very quickly in sync with master because the hydrators weren't running quickly. The actual live branches, those are meant to be out of sync with master, but there's always a pull request so your user knows that that drift exists and that we're waiting to merge to promote. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's, uh, It's just an expression of what you already wrote. Never any movement back. But we can we can follow up uh, over by the Intel booth. Thank you, everybody.